Hi guys, Nikki here. Hi, and I'm Perry, and uh, welcome to the Divine Truth Experience channel. And um, today we're going to uh, we have a very inspired chat actually, because Nikki and I are both just being very inspired, and um, we've both just been out and about, and we actually um, went to a church that we sometimes go to, and um, we had such an amazing time there actually. And basically, what happened is after we after the church service finished, like just Nikki and I looked at each other and was like, man, bro, like we've got to record how we're feeling because we just both had like this really- the exact same feeling. Yeah. And just like this overwhelming love that we were just like, my God, like, like we just want to share this message <laughs> that, um, that came into our hearts whilst we were at, at, at the church service. So basically I know like, um, you know, we, 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 you guys know if you've been watching that we follow the divine you know, love path and divine truth and stuff like that. But we do sometimes go to this church service um, over in London, and one of the main reasons why we go is um, is for the music actually. So obviously Christians have their belief about Jesus, and we have different beliefs about that. However, the church that we've been going to, the one thing that they have in common, um, or certainly what. Um, myself and Nikki have in common is like this love for God and um, we this kind of video basically is for anyone who's been on the divine love path and maybe like don't have a, a, a love a love and passionate desire for God so this message is really to hopefully inspire you to want to have a relationship with God and um, because for us what Nikki and I keep just like feeling is just like that's what the whole point of it is. And um, Jesus and Mary would say it over and over and over, like emotions great and everything and healing, like that's all brilliant. Like it is awesome. Like when you get and work through your emotions, but it just like, it was put on our hearts today that we wanted to kind of remind everyone, like if you're not doing this to have a relationship with God, then kind of like, then what's the point? Like, I mean, you will gain some personal benefit by you know, clearing emotions and everything. But the benefit you will receive from having a relationship with God is just kind of, you can't really put words to it. And uh, what Nick and I have noticed is you can kind of notice straight away when someone has a relationship with God because they're just full of all this excitement and buoyancy and joy. And like, they just want to give, like you have like this giving attitude. And one of the things that I noticed and was when I, I never used to really get this before, until I received some of God's love, it was just like this 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 attitude of gratitude is a, is a saying, and like this put this feeling of like just wanting to give, and um, like you hear it a lot, like you know, like the receiving is in the giving and stuff like that, and like or you you'll like uh, you'll benefit more from from giving, and once you've experienced that love from God, like you you, you know exactly what that means, um, and. And just how special it is. Yeah, and like one of the things is, is like you can't really get that until you've received it. So you can't really give until you've received. So it's kind of like the analogy of people say, like you know, if you're on an airplane and the plane's crashing, first you know, like take care of yourself because then then you can help other people. So that was like what my experience was. Was like you can't really talk about God and like love others the way God would love if you haven't received God's love first. So like it's super, super crucial to have a desire to want to uh, have this relationship with God. So that once you've received God's love and you know what it feels like, it kind of like teaches you on how you can love other people as well. So you don't have to be floundering around going, what would I do in this situation? What would I do in that situation? Because by your relationship with God, you actually then learn by, by, by God showing you how, how God treats you, you will then know how to treat other people. And that's kind of what my experiences have been, in my limited experience as well. Like, I haven't, you know, I'm not saying I've got things down perfectly, <laughs> but just in my, in, in, just in the little that I've received, you start to understand and feel the importance of having this relationship with God. And um, Jesus often says, like, this is the one thing that will pull you through, like, the rest of your life. And... Like Nikki and I are both realizing how true that is. Like your desire to want to have a relationship with God must be paramount. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna get to a problem a problem in your life that you cannot handle, 
and you, you'll do one or two things. You'll either just give up and, 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 and just walk think away. and walk away and give in to your addictions, which a lot of people do, and just think, oh, it didn't work. Or you can surrender <laughs> to God and, um, and, and you'll press on like you'll just want to keep, keep moving forward. So, um, yeah, I don't know if Nikki, uh, if you want to share like a bit yeah. of what you experienced tonight. Yeah, well, yeah. this is one of my fa most favorite topics, talking about like yeah. God and loving God. And I feel like a lot of people who have come across divine truth, I feel a lot of people miss the point mm. of it's all about a relationship between yourself and God and get yourself in that position where you can have that relationship with God. Um, and I just feel like this video may serve as a bit of a reminder to people about what it's all about and mm -hmm. seeing the bigger picture of things. Um, I know, like, in my experience, I've kind of, like, thought that I wouldn't get through certain emotions if God wasn't there. That's how I felt sometimes. And it's like, once you receive like that substance, like the substance of love from God, mm. it makes everything just worth it. Like as soon as you've received some of God's love into your heart, like it just, it's like, yeah, I'll go through that again and again and again and again, just to receive that love. It's, uh, it's, it is the one thing that just keeps pulling you through all the time. And um, as Perry was saying, one of the instant feelings that I get as soon as I, and I'm lucky enough to receive God's love. It's just the, an intense feeling of gratitude towards God. Like it's it's so automatic, really. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't have to think. It's just automatic. Um, and also, an intense amount of gratitude, a soft feeling, like again towards Jesus, Jesus and Mary Magdalene for actually um, coming back to earth and sharing the truth of God with everyone. Because that's how we've got to this point where we've, you know, kind of worked through some emotions and. We've received some of God's love, and it's just like, it is the best feeling ever. Um, but like one of the key things is actually about like giving our love to God. Huh? Like I find in my experience, uh, a lot of times when I'm actually in this pure space and I just want to give love to God, I it like my some of my emotions get triggered in that process. <laughs> And it's like I get the feeling from God as soon as I um, like project my love out towards God, I get this instant feeling back from God, just of just this pure happiness, like this joy <laughs> that that I can feel God is feeling when I'm giving that love to God because it's like um, you know God's given us all free will, and when God gave us all our free will, that obviously comes with. You know, our love, God can't just receive our love if we don't want to give it. Yeah. And and us, when we're kind of, when we've received God's love and we know how amazing it is and we feel how beautiful it is, it's just like, I want to love God as well. Like, I want to give God the best part of me, like the best emotion I can give out, I want to give that to God. And um, and it's just, it's just such an amazing feeling, like you when you're like giving it and you just you can feel these emotions coming back from God just yeah. these really happy emotions um, and that's what we experience at church when we go to this this church uh, this particular church service so they have this very lively worship band playing and all the music is kind of offered to God and it's I mean they do sing about Jesus um, in an erroneous way as well however but mainly this is what you know it's like it's the longing of the heart what counts and it's like not the words so basically, we were in this balcony tonight in this church looking down on about 500 people. And they're all kind of just got their arms. I mean, some of you guys might have been to church and know this already. Um, but this, for people who haven't, you, you can just witness these people with their arms open, just like singing, singing to God, to singing God. their hearts out to God, like giving praise, giving thanks. And uh, they're not, in, I mean, yeah, obviously, they may be like, they may receive something in the process, but it's not like, they're not got their arms on, like, what can I get? What can I get? Like, give me, give me, give me, like, heal me, heal me, heal me, like, in this demanding kind of or needy way. And I've been in this service before and offered my heart. I stood there with my, with my arms open. And basically, what I was doing was surrendering, was like saying, God, like, I can't do this anymore. I've got this problem. I've got this issue. And I don't know how to do it. 
and this is how I feel. I can say the words, or often if I'm in the congregation, I'll just have a longing of the words of like, this is how I'm feeling, God, with my arms out, longing. And then once I connect to that feeling, it's just like God comes in like a lightning bolt, and you're just there in pieces, just like the love comes in, you feel it, you just start to cry, and you just can feel how God's loving you in that moment. And then in this church, you've got all the music amplified as well, plus everyone praying to God. It's such a, it's uh, powerful. It's a really powerful experience. So um, kind of like, it's not really to be snubbed that like church and stuff like There's a lot of Christians out there, I feel, who actually have a genuine desire um, for, for God. And um, so, you know, maybe as we've been learning, a lot of maybe the Christian teachings are erroneous. And I don't know the Bible inside out, so I'm not going to say too much. But it, it, I can't say enough. There's just this longing of the heart, this sincere longing of wanting the relationship with God. And as Nikki and I, like when we go to this church and we see, you know, all these all these uh, Christians pouring their heart out to God, like offering their praise and, 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 and gratitude to God for what they've already got and what they've already received. And then like in that, they receive more so we just like experienced that again tonight and we just we just got so excited to you know maybe just re record this video and for anyone who's struggling on the path just to remind you guys like what it is all about what the point of it is because um, if cause I, cause I reckon like if you just think to yourself oh this is about me and my own healing there'll be some point where you won't be able to heal yourself and um you'll just maybe give up or just think like this healing stuff doesn't work yeah like uh, recently um as you guys may have uh, seen in our previous video about the negative spirit influence and will uh whilst we were both away in lanzarote like we both were going through quite similar emotions um like for an, as an example for me i kind of got to a point where i was just like gotta just give up like in the sense of what I'm in now, I can't, I can't like get out of it myself. I can't like, God, please just help me. Like, I just need to rely on, on God. And just because like nothing in my power, I realized in my heart that there was nothing I could do, nothing further that will get me through that point, basically. And, you know, I was going through all these feelings of feeling just ex exhausted of, you know, me trying to, you know, trying it all myself, trying hard, you know, me giving all of this effort and wanting God to love me. And it was a case of realizing that, like, you know, we can create as many things as we, we want with, like, sharing divine truth with, with people and, like, spreading God's truth. And if we're thinking, oh, if we keep doing more stuff, then God's going to love us. And I got to a point where I was like, no, that's not true. Like, God already loves us, mm -hmm. all of us. Like, even you guys, if you haven't received God's love yet, like, God loves us all already. And, you know, it's, you know, God's, like, I, I feel God want, would love everyone to just know that wherever we're all at, mm -hmm. God already loves us. God doesn't want us to prove to God, like, <laughs> you know, that we're some, you know, somebody special. So that, you know, we can, if we do something, then we've earned some of God's love. That's just not how it works at all. And it's just about getting to that point when you actually fully realize in your heart that, you know, <laughs> you can't actually do it on your own. Like you can't, you get to a point where you, you, you work through some stuff and, and whatnot, but then you get to a, a point further down the line where you're just like, I actually can't do anything more myself. <laughs> like I actually have to rely on somebody else and for me very that is god like for a fact like that's just how it's been yeah i mean um in the, in the service tonight the pastor i think they call them pastors uh, the guy who was giving the, the preach, talk the preacher yeah uh one of the things he just kind of like he said out to the audience he goes he goes oh um i think there's a few of you in the audience tonight who have a broken soul and he goes what i just urge you to do is like just tell that to god and that just hit me so much because I've been there before in that situation where I've literally just felt like I've just said to God, look, I'm just broken. Like, I don't know. I don't even know how to fix myself. Like, can you, can you, can you fix me? Like, just, and just then 
you just feel this love come in and you, you just kind of it just is so overwhelming when you just go to god saying like the truth of it like i'm broken i feel this i feel that and then you just kind of laying all your heart out to god and then god just comes in and then if it doesn't it doesn't matter because you just you know you're not you're not doing it in expectation in a way of just like you know, demanding where you just literally pouring your heart out to god so what i not like like to suggest is like if any of you are struggling and you do feel broken like God can fix. I can. T I can't tell you how much, guys. Like how much I used to loathe myself. I absolutely used to loathe myself. Like I, I had no self worth. I just it was just. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. And um, and and you know, I just asked God like to help restore me. And the feelings, you know, I'm not like I said. I'm not perfect now, but I've got like this love for myself that I never used to have before. And. Um, and you start treating yourself more lovingly in ways which you would have never imagined before. So, like physical things, you know, like uh, like stop drinking, stop taking drugs. Um, you start like drinking water because you like you want to hydrate yourself. Your physical environment where you hang out, um, kind of for your sleep, that um, you, uh, eating meat, all that type of stuff. You start to just realize different things about love and the quality of love and then you act differently because you you felt how god would would, would do things um i know i know like the same for nikki as well like it's just we both just changed so much and we've still got like a long 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 yeah. long 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 way to go in our progression towards god and we've still got addictions that's like you know i'm not trying to hide i'm not trying to hide that fact no, we're just being honest yeah, yeah we've got so, issues like, you know, almost like, oh, everyone pretty much. Yeah. Um, and it's just a case of just being honest with it, just saying, look, no, I do have this issue. Um, God, please, can you help me with the issue? Mm. That's all it is, really. And it's just a case of wanting to, like, just wanting that relationship with God and just, you know, wanting. It's like, it's a case of, like, when you receive God's love, it's just like you want more. It's like this instant yeah. feeling, like, oh, I want more, I want more. But also, I want to get to a point where I'm like, the more I develop, the more of my love I can give to God as well. Like the more powerful my love will be to God. And like one of the things that I've kind of been realizing over the last couple of weeks is that what we're doing together, like with these YouTube videos, with the website and the forum, like this is not us, you know, for us. Like we're doing this because you know, it's part of our, our sole passion in sharing divine truth with people and spreading God's word um, with people on earth. But it's just like this feeling like of wanting to give our experiences to others in the hope that it may help them as well. And like, it's, I, I just feel it's about time now that the whole earth knew God's truth. And I feel all the people who are living on earth now they, every single person deserves to know God's truth and, you know, not be led astray by all of these false teachings and not even realizing the, uh, you know, the dark spirit influence that is constantly on the earth. I just feel, you know, now's the time that God's word and God's name should be spread in the way, in the truth of God, by like God's truth. Yeah, there's like, there's just so much suffering in the world. And uh, one thing in the service tonight, I was really struck by, there was an old guy, an older guy next to me, maybe in his late 50s, and he was just singing his heart out to God. He was, just, he was only on his own. So, you know, he wasn't doing it to show off. He wasn't trying to, you know, look good in front of anyone. He was just on his own, singing to God. And I was like, wow, that is so amazing how this, this bloke's just turned up on his own, singing to God. And just for the fact that he wants to praise God, and he's like, I could feel he wasn't expecting anything in return. It was just his gift back to God. And um, what I realized was also, it's just like, I, I've, I've felt this in the past, and, and there's probably still a lot of that emotion in me. But I think it might be quite particularly hard for, for a man. Um, it might be for women. I'm sorry if, uh, if I'm uh, being a bit, um, what's the word? Stereotypical. Stereotypical. But for a man to admit that he's weak and that he, he that he is broken, and because I think that prevents a lot of men opening their hearts to God to say, you know what, 
I, I, I can't do this on my own. And I feel like a lot of men are like that. It's just like, like to admit you're weak as a man is, is quite hard, actually. It goes against the grain of society, <laughs> basically. It does, doesn't it? And it kind of, you got, I've been there so many times going, God, I, I, like, you don't want to admit you're weak. But the thing is, like, when you do, you just feel this love and it just feels so amazing that you are supported. And that feeling of starts to go away where you're just like, um, like, I want to do it on my own. Like, you start to get more desirous of, like, I want God to help me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray. And it was just so beautiful when I was seeing this older bloke just singing his heart out to God. I just thought to myself, Man, he's been, I, I can tell he's been praying for a lot of years. Because <laughs> um, he was just praying just because he wanted to. And I, I just thought that was a really beautiful place um, to be in, really. So I like, yeah, so sorry, women, if, uh, if you do feel that as well. Um, if it is hard for you to admit your weaknesses. But I don't know, I just felt if there's any men watching, that, that, that me saying that might, might actually benefit you to kind of go away and admit to God where your weaknesses are. Um, and there's no shame in it. Like, if you do feel some shame, obviously, you'll, you'll go through that. But God already knows the worst in you. Like, <laughs> he already he can see everything. But it's just kind of like takes for you to admit it, um, for the healing to start to work, and then God can uh, work a magic on you. And then you'll build a little bit more faith, and you'll just want to, I presume, you'll just have this more desire to actually want to pray even more yeah. and you want to know God because you've, you've you learned something about yourself as well and um, and then you'll see that relationship and it's just awesome and hence <laughs> why Nikki and I are quite passionate about wanting to tell the world about it basically because um, yeah I mean yeah. one thing I've learned is a real man is, n is not defined as a man who's hard who's rigid who's, you know, strong with their emotion. That's not how we, what a real man is defined as. A real man is a man who lets themselves be, lets themselves feel their emotion, lets themselves cry if they want to cry, you know, lets themselves, you know, express the heart rather than just, you know, having this cold, steely kind of persona that you give out to everyone that's not what a real man is and that's something i've been learning because like my dad is a man that i've just described one who's very tough you know very firm never i've, I've only seen my dad ever cry once in my whole life like the the all the only other memories i have of my dad is with him being angry that the only other like that's the only real emotion i've ever seen my dad have essentially um, and I was quite a sensitive child when I was younger and I feel that like triggered my dad a lot as well mm. and kind of my dad tried to like beat that out of me he tried to like beat that sensitiveness out of me and like toughen no up. yeah toughen me up he's, he's like yeah you know you're not a real man real real men don't cry real men don't do this real men don't do that and you know I grew up and I I remember I started getting harder in myself. I, I, I was feeling that you know I, I, I need to hide my tears if I, if I get upset or something. And, and that was one of the greatest things when I came across divine truth. Is when Jesus was just saying, you know, like when you're real, you're feeling all your emotions. And, and I was like, that's what I knew. It's something I, I knew when I was a child, but I've been, you know, I've been brought up to forget that. And forget that part of me and um, that was just a big thing but like going back to the church service one thing that really touched me was whilst we were on the balcony looking at everyone um, singing there were a group of like uh, deaf people oh, yeah. they're like a, a group of about five or six deaf people and they were all sat down and like when the music's playing obviously they can't hear the music but they're like what they what they've done at the church which is awesome is they've got like the lyrics up on the screen as well yeah. um but also what i saw was like you know there were a couple of deaf people there and there was um, a, a person who obviously could hear and they were like doing the sign language stuff mm -hmm. to like the deaf people sat down and i was just watching the deaf people and they were still singing and they were going like this and you know i was just i was just thinking you know like it's like the one thing that matters is having this love for God, this relationship with God. It doesn't matter if you're blind, it doesn't matter yeah. if you're deaf, dumb, 
you know, it's all through feelings, and and that's another thing I realised when I watched this film, Forrest Gump. You know, the the character is portrayed as someone yeah. who's quite dumb and stupid, um, but the one thing that stuck out, um, the one line that stuck out for me in that film was when he said to the girl who I was feeling that they're soulmates, but he said to her, he's like, I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is. And I was like, that is like, boom, that's the truth right there. Like, you know, you, like all this stuff we've got is just a bonus. Like, it's all comes down to that love and that relationship you have with God and then how receiving that love from God, how then you can like share that with other people and get them into a place where they can also be in that same like space. And, you know, we're far from, you know, where we'd like to be. Put it, let's put it that way. We're yeah. still feeling, we're still far away, but like it's just a case of we're, we've been growing and we're at a point where we've received some truth from God, received some love from God. We, we're kind of realizing who we are as, as people the, in the way the gifts we've been lucky to have in our souls. Like you guys have obviously got your own gifts as well. It's, some of you may know what they are, some of you are still not sure, you know, you don't know, but. It's just like we just want to give what we've learned to others. Like it's just an automatic thing of receiving God's love. It's just you want to do it. You want to do it for all your other brothers and sisters. You want to do it for God as well. Like, and it's not like I'm getting this feeling from God going, "Now you've received my love. Now you need to tell it." I don't feel like that at all. It's just I want to do it. It's just the right thing to do. It's the loving thing to do. Everyone should experience what we've experienced, basically. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the main passion. Well, I think it's both of our same passions. Is just like I just like really would love, and I'm sure you guys do too. You know, in uh, in your hearts and hearts, like just want to see the world restored in love. And um, once you start to experience it. You just kind of want to do everything you can to help restore the love back on the earth. Like, I can't think of anything better I'd rather do in my life than trying to restore you the love of humanity. And um, one of the things that was blocking me before was because I, I, I thought I had to be perfect first. And I, and I realized I've done that in all my life. Um, I never really succeeded in the, uh, I never became a professional in everything. So I never used to attempt because I thought, well, I'm, I, I'm not that good at it. So why would I even bother trying to, I'd, I'd see the professionals and just think, well, I'm not as good as them, so I won't try. And um, what I've realized with um, my relationship with God is you don't have to be perfect to go to God. God knows he's not perfect, but what you will need to do is you'll need to go to God with an honest heart and a sincere heart. And, and so God knows you're broken. So it's kind of just like admitting that to yourself. That for me was just, just the deal breaker of being like, wow, like I can be broken and you still, like Nikki said earlier, you're still loved by God. Like now you, you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to do anything um, apart from just having the sense of your longing. And um, that's basically the teachings of uh, divine truth, I'd say. <laughs> um, and through that, you get so many more gifts so you might, you might receive some love from God or um, like some healing and you start to learn things about yourself that you never knew before or you receive a gift from God that you won't even ask him for, like you're asking for one thing but then God floods you with 10 things and you're like, wow. And when you experience that, it, just, it blows you away so much and it's just so encouraging that obviously can't tell you enough because I've told you probably about ten times in this <laughs> message already. <laughs> yeah, like one of the uh, one of the things for me that's kept me going, like with you know wanting to go through emotions, is like I want to know more about God. I want God to teach me more about who God is and the qualities of God. Because every time I've you know like you receive God's love you know like quite a few more things about God straight away. It's like this instant knowing of, you know, what God's like essentially. And for me, I just love just wanting to learn more about God, wanting to know 
who God is, the real God, and that's the actual desire I had in me that was was brewing. Mm. I didn't come across divine truth because I wanted to better my life, or you know, wanting to learn more about the universe that we were living in. I just had this feeling coming up in me, and it got so strong. It was just like, like if there's a God, I really want to know what what God's like. That was the feeling that I had, and within a week, like. There it was, divine truth just came to me in my life within a week of having that feeling, just wanting to know God and like, it's just like God was there. He's like, okay, you want to know about me? I'll show you, I'll lead you right right to the uh, stuff you need to to learn about, to like know more about me. Mm-hmm. And it's just always learning more about God. It's just the best thing I, I feel for me, just, like feeling God's nature and personality and characteristics it's yeah. just amazing i think also like uh, a lot of people i definitely have and probably still do have like this feeling of like uh, making mistakes or like not acting in case you get things wrong and stuff like that and um yeah i just like really encourage like just to pray for courage to act even though you might make a mistake like it's i've learned it's better that way i've me- i can't tell you how many times i've messed up big time like proper big time even whilst been on the divine love path, done things so out of harmony with love. But what happens is, I, I acted at least, and the weight of kind of um, the repentance of it is just like, whoa, do you know what? I'm never going to do that again. Um, or sometimes, you know, you might just make a simple mistake and, and, you, and you learn quite easily. But what I realized before, I just never used to act, so then it just like nothing happened. So I don't know, I dare say it's better to act. Yeah, for sure. Just certain. like, um, even if you don't know if it's loving or not, and then afterwards you'll find out. Yeah. And sometimes you'll be lucky and um, things will work out well. Um, or I guess you can be unlucky slash lucky and find out you made a mistake and, uh, and you'll learn from it, hopefully, and, uh, and you'll, and you, and you'll realise God still loves you. And yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, like I've definitely learned that the way I've learned a lot is through acting. That for me is the best way to learn is like you hear, you know, some teachings of divine truth and you, you know, it, it stores in your mind intellectually. So you don't feel it fully, but you know it in your head mm. or what it, you know, maybe what is the loving choice in this situation or this situation or, you know, doing whatever, like, you know, something like that. And it's a case of like taking the action, but before you take the action, just feel a bit and think about what you've heard already and kind of like see logically like like if I do this well, you know maybe if I do it this way it might be loving and, and whatnot and then you take the action and when you take the action God's like yes I can now help you I can now take the action I can bring you things to show you if you've like and the truth of the situation or not and like the guys who have who are members on the forum or people who, are, who aren't registered on the forum and are guests, it's clear to see I've made like a good few mistakes on the forum. You know, I've, I've, I've struck off a couple of people that shouldn't have. And, um, and, and then sometimes as well, I kind of didn't address un, unloving behavior when I should have because of a certain fear in me to not do that. So I've made a good couple, you know, a good amount of mistakes and it was a big experience for me at first just to get myself in that place of humility. It's just like, right, I made a mistake. You know, I can correct that mistake now. But also when I was, um, when I struck off somebody um, or gave them a couple of strikes when they shouldn't have, I kind of realized my mistake and I was in a place of repentance with God and I was just feeling bad for what I did. and. It was almost like the feeling I was getting back from God was like, okay, you've made a mistake, but it's like, and it's great that you're now feeling the consequences of that, but for me, I wasn't really feeling like it's a consequence. It was like this learning curve for me, and it was like God was more interested in showing me why I made that mistake, like what emotion within me like caused me to make that mistake where it came from in my childhood. And it was just like, you know, just this lovely feeling of just like, yeah, you know, you've acknowledged you've made a mistake. You know, you've spoken to the person who who you made a mistake to and you told them you're sorry. 
and that's that's awesome. That's what you know. If you take your personal responsibility for life, you would do that. And then it was just like, now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you why it happened. And you know, I, I wasn't getting the feeling feeling in me like, oh, okay, God's going to tell me I'm a naughty boy. You know, God's going to punish me, and tell me off. You know, God's just not like that at all. And I know pretty much, you know, all, a lot of people have had a parent who's told them off and hit them or smack them for doing something that was wrong in their eyes. Uh, it happened to me as well. Like it happened to me a lot with, uh, with my parents, predominantly my dad. But um, And that was one of the great things was realising in that moment that God's not like my dad at and like, all. And like God loves you through that process as yeah. well. And when you, when you feel like God's loved you, even though you've made a mistake, like you just like you're even more overwhelmed yeah, like, you are. than you were beforehand because you're just like oh my god you still love me even though you know I've I've, uh, I've, I've messed up and the more yeah. gratitude comes and the, more, and the gratitude. more love you want to give to God yeah. as well yeah so then what happens is what do you learn you learn that when someone makes a mistake with you hopefully you know you don't smash them down and you don't take them to pieces you don't take them to the dry cleaners you have compassion and empathy for them because you know that that's what you've received. So that you'd want to treat the other person in the same way when they've made a mistake. You know, you won't just be like, I can't believe you. you. You know, if you're humble enough, you just be like, well, they've made a mistake. Um, I'll help them all I can for them to realise how they've made the mistake. And if I, they ask me, yeah. if they ask me, um, you know, what my feelings were and why they made a mistake, then I can tell them. And um, so you just you just learn from God all the time. So and also, you'd want to be in a position whereby if someone made a mistake towards you or treated you unlovingly you want to forgive them you yeah. want to go through that process of forgiving them if uh, what they've caused you has caused grief in or sadness or affected you in in that way like you want to do that for them because i know for me when i've uh, repented for things i've done wrong i cannot tell you how um, powerful it is when you go to that person and and express your um, like how sorry you are to them, and they turn around and say, "Yeah, it's like you know, thank you so much for you know getting in touch with me and expressing that." And, um, and, and then they also say, "Yeah, look, no, it's cool. I, I forgive you for that and stuff." And it all just works out like really, really well. Back then, you ever thought it would? If you actually do the process and you go to God and you go with God first uh, with the repentance. And then you go to the other person as well. It's like all that process of, like the loving processes we've got, really. Um, but yeah, like that's kind of what we were feeling inspired to share today after going to that church service and feeling all the love mm. people were having there towards God. You know, 500 people singing their hearts out, all going to God. It was just a great thing to see. And I feel it's something that maybe a lot, you know, we should all remember why we're doing what we're doing, why we're wanting to go through these emotions because we want to have that relationship with God where it becomes better and you know we can receive that love from God we can give God more love the more we progress and that is the key yeah. like, of the whole thing uh, the whole thing because um, really why do you want to go for all these really nasty painful emotions and you're not you're not having a sincere desire to then like ask God for love it's crazy almost like because God's love is the best feeling in the universe. Like, I tell you, that is an absolute fact, like, from what I've received so far. And it all just makes it so worthwhile, the whole process, when you get yourself in that position where you've got more room in your heart to then receive the love from God as well. It's just the best. Yeah, and your heart softens and, like, you, there's less fear in your life. Like, you're going about your life with, like, with more faith. Um, you're not like running around acting all the time to try and fix stuff up because you have a bit more faith in God that God will come um, and sort things out for you, so to speak. Um, so yeah, it's like a lot less fear. Probably you get a lot less wrinkles because of that. <laughs> you like look a bit more youthful and all that type of stuff. So um, <laughs> yeah, is that kind of yeah. kind of kind of it? I think today yeah, what we wanted to just share, just because we were so enthused. And um, yeah, guys, I hope that you uh, enjoy able it. to get some value out of what we've uh, shared with you today and put into practice what we've shared. And then, um, yeah, it'd be good to see what happens in your own lives. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. And um, we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers.